man, it's this is going to be hard coming to you guys, uh, doing a review episode for the last Eagles game of the 2019-2020 season. But that's that is it is what it is. The Philadelphia Eagles in the wild card round of the NFL playoffs faced off against the Seattle Seahawks. And in a very controversial game, in a game that quite honestly came down to the wire in a one possession game, our Philadelphia Eagles, who limped all the way to the to the NFL playoffs, injuries all over the field. And probably the biggest injury of the season happened in this wild card game against the Seahawks, and that would be the difference of the reason why we are now going to be watching the NFL playoffs from home and the Seattle Seahawks are moving on. But guys, I'm in Fox Little Philly, uniting all through sports and culture here in the beautiful city of Philadelphia. And today, we're going to do a little, little last review of the Eagles season conclusion against the Seattle Seahawks in the wild card round. But guys, don't go anywhere because you don't want to miss this episode whatsoever. And let's get this started, shall we? I think so. Yeah! What's going on everyone before we move any forward first off i want to say thank you guys thank you so much for tuning into my channel here it really means a lot to me guys but we are trying to grow el parcero philly here in the beautiful city of philadelphia we're just trying to make my face known here in the sports market quite frankly here and guys honestly i could use your help to grow here help me out by liking this video subscribing to this channel hitting the bell button for notifications as well as sharing this video and this channel to help me grow but that's right, guys. Eagles, Seahawks in the NFL wild card round here, and we knew that this was not going to be an easy game. This would probably come down to the end to the wire, but we all felt confident. And you know, I talked about it in, in the tail during the tailgate that I felt really good about going into this game. The way the Eagles just won four straight, won the NFC East. Yet you had a group of guys that bought in and believed into the to this system, bought and believed in the Carson Wentz, and they were going as far as Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson were going to take this team. And then, in the game, during the first drive, obviously Carson Wentz had a little playoff jitters. It was his first game. We didn't know what we would see from Carson Wentz in his first ever playoff game, and he definitely got a little nervous, a little rattled, but it was okay. We knew that, you know, he was going to shake it off. You know, he's going to throw a couple more passes, he's going to get in the groove of things, and he's going to get comfortable, and we were going to win this game. And then, and then it was the moment that changed our season around for the absolute worst. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I know Jadavion Clowney. I've, I've watched Jadavion Clowney since he was a, a, a freshman phenom in South Carolina. And he's a physical player. He likes to play violent. You, you know, you respect that as a as a, as a admirer of good defense. But there's just one thing here, guys, that really, you know, it, it, it really... It hurts. It really hurts. It, it, it doesn't even make me angry. It just it hurts so bad. And we've seen Jadavion Clowney with violent tackles, violent bring downs in, in his career. It, even back in South Carolina, there was that one bowl game where South Carolina faced off against Michigan, and he legit just ripped some the running back's head off. I think I forget his name, something Shaw. And it was a violent ass tackle. Last season, if you guys remember the run we had on, the tech one, while Jadavion Clowney was still a member of the Houston Texans, the Texans came up here to Philly in a crucial game for us to stay alive in the playoffs. And in the red zone, Jadavion Clowney was let, let go free. And he took down Nick Foles very violently. He ripped his helmet off. It was an illegal tackle, to say the least, yet he did not get penalized whatsoever in that play. Now let's fast forward to now. While Now, now that Javion Clowney is a member of the Seattle Seahawks, he was hurt yesterday. He was hurt in this game against the against the Eagles. Yet he still was effective, and he made the play that really changed the momentum for the Seattle Seahawks. It was with... It was about six to five minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, Carson Wentz uh, felt the pressure, and he decided to, to scramble out of the pocket and run for a couple yards when he went down. And then Jadavion Clowney decided to add the final touches on the tackle and lead with his head first. Now, and lead with his head first to, to make sure Carson Wentz went down. Now, guys, listen. You guys may think I'm the soccer guy or whatnot, and that is true. I love soccer, but... I grew up playing football. I played six years of football, of organized football. I played peewee. I played two years of high school. And guys, I was a defensive end. I played defense. 
the, and, and there was an, and no case where I ever, when a guy was already on the ground, went to go finish off the tackle and lead with my head. There was no need for that. Yeah, yeah of course, you, you know, I, I've I've finished off tackles. I, I might have like, you know, thrown my arms and then done, done a little check down while the runner or while the carrier was on the ground. That is fine. But why are you going down leading with your head when Carson Wentz was already down? Like, come on, guys. Like, it, it, it's it's common sense here. It's 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 literal human common sense here. For people, there's Tony Dungy, who played in the NFL, coached in the NFL. For him to say that it wasn't a dirty play, and you have Danny Canal's bum ass say, saying Carson Wentz is injury prone, there is just too much idiotcy going on in the last 24 hours. It is absolutely mind-boggling here, guys. Listen. There was no need for Jadavion Clowney to finish that play. Jadavion Clowney knew what the hell he was doing. He knew that Carson Wentz was the engine of this Eagles team. We went as far as we did because of Carson Wentz. You know, I I really don't want to believe that, you know, Jadavion would be that malicious to actually try to take out our quarterback. But, guys, that was a dirty hit. You guys can say what you want, but that was a dirty hit. And that literally changed the game for the worst for the Eagles. Because then we had Josh McCown come in. And and no disrespect to Josh McCown, but Josh McCown is a 40-year-old backup quarterback who just came out of coaching high school football to be a back to 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 sign on with the Eagles as a backup. We were expecting this guy to take to take this Eagles team to the divisional round when he didn't even get a single snap this season and he hasn't played since what? Like 2 2 years ago. It, it was it was going to be difficult for us to move past the Seattle Seahawks with a, with Josh McCown at the age he was, with the amount of reps he had at that time. And plus, on the other side, you have a pretty damn good quarterback in Russell Wilson, who 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 showed you why he is a he is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. He led this team. He absolutely put this team on his back. And you can clearly see, you know, the type of leadership that Russell Wilson has. You know, uh, he's always trying to get everyone motivated. You know, even, even you see him clapping, you see him cheering on his guys. He's such a motivational leader that it, it was just, it was really, there was no way that we were going to win this game without Carson Wentz. With the battle tested that Seattle is, there was no way it was going to happen. And, and and yeah, Josh McCown looked slow. He looked lost. Um, he he looked uncomfortable. He, he obvi- I mean, obviously he hasn't really done this this year, and he hasn't done this in a while. And he's and this isn't the same Josh McCown that you know, the Arizona Cardinals Josh McCown, the Raiders Josh McCown, even even the Jets or the Browns Josh McCown that gave them two teams a couple good seasons. This this was a definitely shell of of what Josh McCown used to be, in, but it was. It really was humbling and nice to see. You know, uh, you can't fault Josh McCown for this also. I don't think I don't really think people are. And you know, seeing Josh McCown at the end of the game, hugging Zach Ertz, just just saying sorry, feeling so apologetic. Like Josh, you really don't have to apologize at all. You literally gave everything you could. We understand. We understand you haven't played at all. We understand you're 40 years old. You're you're not going to outrun the Seattle Seahawks defense. We get that. And, you know, he was so choked up. And this it's crazy to think that Josh McCown has played 17 years in the NFL and he's never started or never even played in a playoff game. That's crazy. Josh would finish this game 18-24 for 174 yards. And the Seahawks w- were able to get seven sacks on Josh McCown. Now, you know, it was it was tough for Josh McCown to do much of anything with him being limited with his speed. He's not as not as mobile as he once was, and the offensive line, quite honestly, weren't playing the best. I think uh, I think it's clear to say, I think it's clear to say that we seen Jason Peters suit up for the last time as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. He really was a shell of what we remember Jason Peters being. He really he, he he did not he wasn't sharp at all, and you could tell you could see his age on this game. So. It, it, this definitely was the last time we've seen Jason Peters. And then on the right side, you know, you didn't have Brandon Brooks or Lane Johnson on that right side. And you could clearly see we missed both those guys. Those guys really make running down that side so much easier. They Those two guys have been such a rock. And then you put Pryor and you put Big V on that right side. And there was a cool, there was a, a legit difference. A legit difference. So I, I know we'll talk. We'll talk more about the future of this Eagles team. But I think that going forward, you know, Peters will not be a member of the Eagles, and I think that we will see Andre Dillard 
as the future left tackle of your Philadelphia Eagles. But that really, you can, you could put to, you, you, there's different factors here. The offensive line not playing up to capability. Josh McCown being a shell of himself. We weren't able to run as effectively, especially we were down. You have to throw a little bit more when you're when you're down in this game. And also, you don't have a big third wide receiver as well. That would have helped a little bit if you would have had like a DeAndre Hopkins or OBJ, something like that, for a backup quarterback. But our both our most our most lethal weapon was Zach Ertz, and he was not healthy. He was not healthy in this game whatsoever. He he was playing with with fractured ribs, a lacerated kidney. Like, Zach Ertz is a fucking man. Zach Ertz would finish with two catches, so he wasn't really as effective as we as we normally know him being. And Dallas Goddard really was the security blanket for Josh McCown in this game today. He would he would finish this game with seven catches for 73 yards. But no one else really could get going. You know, Greg Ward, Boston Scott, Miles Sanders all, all had three catches. While Deontay Burnett, Josh McCown's boy, actually would only have would only get one catch. And although Miles Sanders was hurt, and it would and it would come, we would find out after the game that Miles Sanders had a MCL sprain and he was playing with an MCL sprain. Miles Sanders is a tough SOB. And he would finish this game with 69 yards on 14 carries. Boston Scott would get 25 yards on six carries. So, you know, it's it's it just sucks to, you know, the the running the running game really wasn't working and it just it, it, it's just tough. You because you, you know that the problem is you know that this Eagles offense is not gonna go deep. So what the Seahawks did was just line up would would stack up the box. You know we're not gonna go deep. If you run the ball, you're prepared for it. If if we're, we're gonna throw something short, you're prepared for that as well. So not having that deep threat really limits your offense, and you can clearly tell. And it was tough to get anything started on offense. You look at the other side, the defensive side of the ball. You know, you, I really can't fault this defense too much. They've really, they've done their job in this run as well. They did everything we could. And and the problem is with this defense is, especially on this game. You know, on the defensive line, Brandon Graham got hurt. Fletcher Cox played like an absolute beast, like he always does. He was definitely the player of the game on this on this defense. And and then. You didn't have anyone else step up on that defensive. Granted, Vinnie Curry did get a nice block in, in the first half. That made the score what it was. But no one else on the defensive line really stepped up. And and the X plays. You know, for every, you know, sack or run for a loss that you get, you know, then the, the offense allows a 20-plus a, a yard play. And DK Metcalf was the absolute difference maker here. And it's crazy to think that he was drafted only a couple slots after our rookie wide receiver, J.J. Arteca Whiteside, and E.K. had nine, seven catches on nine targets for 160 yards and a touchdown. He looked like an absolute beast, and it's crazy that the Seahawks, early in this year when they came in, they were trying to, they ran the same plays uh, last night that they did in that regular season game, and D.K. dropped some of those crucial passes that would have made the, the score a lot bigger, but on this day, he was catching those balls, and he was an absolute difference maker for the Seahawks. Russell Wilson has found has finally found a security uh, blanket. The, you know him and Tyler Lockett have that great chemistry, but now he's got a big physical wide receiver that that they can use, and he was killing us out there. He was absolutely killing us, and he he got he got the touchdown to make it seventeen six, and then he got the the the, the essentially the, the catch that would seal the win for the Seahawks, and all you can see is you know. Minute some left on the clock, and DK catches that big catch to seal the win. And he gets up and he puts the peace sign up and saying goodbye to all the Eagles fans. And and at that moment, it hits you that this wild run is over. You know, we we thought it was going to be another 2017 run. This was a band of misfits that were going to do something special. But then Jadavion Clowney ended our season and the Seahawks took advantage of it. Just a fact of the matter, guys. And really, the game changer to me had to have been that third and one. It was a it, it, it Russell Wilson faked the uh, faked the handoff to Marshawn Lynch and he rolled outside the pocket and uh Vinnie Curry and Vinnie Curry instead of containing decided to go for Russell Wilson and that would leave Marshawn Lynch wide open right behind him and just Flipped it to Marshawn, and Marshawn got like 10 plus yards after that catch, and that really sealed the game. To my honor, and that really changed the momentum 
in my honest opinion. And, and it's just tough because we couldn't we couldn't score points. They kept us out of the the end zone. We were eating the red zone, and then there was those those two two plays that we went down on fourth down. That first one, the Miles Sanders, like at the end of the day, like it, yeah, Miles Sanders should have caught that. Yeah, Josh McCown could have thrown a better pass. But guys, down to your backup quarterback. You don't have all the trust in the world in your kicker and Jake, and Jake Kelly. And in those, if the, we were to kick those kicks, he probably would have made those. But you have to go for them. And, you know, you guys love Doug Peterson's ballsy play calling until moments like when it's fourth and seven and they go for it because they're they're down to the backup quarterback and they need something big to happen. I'm not going to fault them for that play. They, you you got to go for it. You got to go for it. You know, you're trying to seal the win here. And you, ha- you have to do anything to try to steal momentum away from the Seahawks because they had it. They had it at, in the second half. Yeah, the season is over. And I, honestly, guys, what hurts me more is the fact that, you know, if, you know, forget the fan, forget us, the fans, forget us. You know, we're just a bunch of nerds, all right? It's this team. This team literally has been through hell. They deserve this more than anything. The fact that we lost all the players, we, we lost more players this year than we did last year. And yet this team stepped up and took this took this city on a ride. And it, the ride got cut short. But, damn, this is one season I will never forget. This is absolutely what, one season I will never forget. And, damn, well, final score again. Eagles losing to the Seattle Seahawks 17-9. The same score that we lost to in the regular season. Go figure, man. I cannot wait till we play the Seahawks again. I don't care if it's in Philly. I don't care if it's in Seattle. I want to be there. Because this is now a team that I have my eye on. And I hate you, Seattle. I hate you. Especially you, Jadavion Clowney. Especially you. But guys, that's all I got for you today. But listen, it's not about me either. It's about you guys. In the comments below, let's talk Eagles. How are you guys feeling? Are you as angry as I am towards your Davion Clowney? Do you do you have do you, are you upset at all of the Eagles? I want to hear your guys' take. You want to talk Carson Wentz too? Let's talk anything Eagles. Let me know in the comments below. And of course, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys checking out my channel here. But we are trying to grow El Parcero Philly here in the Philadelphia sports market. And quite honestly, I could use your guys' help. Help me out by liking this video, subscribing to this channel hitting the bell button for his notifications, as well as sharing this video and this channel to help me grow. And if you guys want to follow me on the platforms of social media, you can absolutely do so. Follow me on Twitter, at El Parcero Philly, and you can also follow me on Instagram, at L underscore Parcero underscore Philly. And until next time, mi gente, I am El Parcero Philly, telling you guys, go birds. I will talk to you guys very soon.